Well, my name's Hannah and I work for the British Institute of Inkeeping and I'm joined today with Stephen uh, from a company called HGEM. So thank you, Stephen, for joining us. Um, great to have you online. Um, so can we start, could you tell us a little bit about HGEM and what HGEM is, what you do um, that might be relevant to our members? Sure. So our purpose at HGEM um, in our strap line is to empower hospitality mm -hmm. and what that means is um, that we work with hospitality businesses to help them understand what's what's happening um, in, in their businesses and to provide better hospitality. So we get that from uh, insights from the guest experience. Um, that's what the GEM stands for, guest experience management. Um, uh, and those insights come from three main sources. So uh, they will come from reviews that we'll find online uh, through the likes of Google and Facebook, TripAdvisor. Uh, etc. Um, from surveys that we host on behalf of our clients, um, which are used to create more of a connection um, uh, with the with the guest and and get more structured feedback from them. Um, and then there's there's audits uh, which we use mystery guests to complete, which are um, provide the kind of more balanced um, objective assessment of what's actually happening on on the estate. So we can talk about those in a little bit more detail in a moment um, but wrapped up together um, all of all of that then we feed into um, a portal which which we call the hub which is where you can see what's coming in um, but crucially take action on it um, and um, decide you know what what you can do that's actually going to improve the operation uh, for the next time at future guests visit so that whole thing we call guest experience management um, and that's a uh, I suppose a, a discipline, a business discipline that we've been trying to establish for hospitality businesses um, to provide uh, the frameworks for that to be effective, the tools that you can use in order to, to gather the necessary information uh, and then to actually take action on what's in there. So that's that's what we do in a, in a nutshell. And I guess with the, the challenges that businesses have faced over the last two years and understanding um, how hard it's been for our members, looking at guest experience now is less of a um less of a nice to have and almost more of a must have because i know that certainly as a consumer myself um with the rising cost of living i'm looking at where i spend my money and when i do go out and spend my money um i want that whole experience to be to be really great so um, I know there was a period of time where um, consumers were probably a little bit more forgiving um, in terms of the experience as we came out of the pandemic, but I think now um, their expectations have risen. So I guess the customer experience and being able to measure and, and take action on those areas is really becoming um, more of a, a critical business practice now. Yeah, it is. I and mean, we, we've definitely seen that in uh, some of the, the, the metrics that we track. And, and as things started opening up again, people were actually quite forgiving. And, you know, a lot of people were just delighted to get back out again and start seeing people again. But reasonably quickly, you know, we, we know we've had the recruitment uh, challenges uh, and, and supply chain challenges and, and, and so on. Um, and, and I think consumers now have gone beyond that. And now it's a case of, well, you know, I have a choice. I have a choice of places where I can go. And uh, if I don't have a great experience, I, I will tell people about it. So it, it is more of a risk now. Um, and that's why it's really important to um, to be able to see see the patterns, but also to be able to see how you can manage it and, and feel that you've got some control, you've got some influence over that, that experience that people are, are having, um, rather than being passive and, and hoping for hoping for the best. Um, but yeah, certainly now I think we're, we're into a kind of a business as usual state, certainly as far as the consumer is concerned. Um, and that's why we need to keep on top of things. And we, I know we're using you guys to help us with our licensee of the year award judging. Um, and you do the part of the process that involves the site visits. So when we look at that, and I, I've recently done some webinars with one of last year's winners, um, Chris Black, and we talked around how he used um the feedback that he got from you to train and develop his staff and used it as an ongoing part of the process um what's involved in those visits so can you just tell our members what kind of things you cover um as part of your mystery visits sure so i think the 
the first place to start really is understanding what success looks like for, for your business because um, the things that set you apart might be different to what somebody else is working on. Um, so the place to start is, is, is by framing that and, and we try and lead that conversation with something that we call the, the, the gem wheel that breaks down a typical guest experience into four main segments that's people, process, product and place and then 12 kind of sub, sub segments um, beyond that um, and it's a case of looking at each one and saying um, what does this mean for, for us? What, what does a successful welcome mean for us, for example? Because, um, you know, some places will have hosts on the door, others that's not appropriate, you want to do something different. Very often it's about acknowledgement in, in that particular example. Um, you know, what does good product knowledge mean for us? Or, or you know, what, what do we expect in terms of timings, for example? So once you understand what success looks like, then you can um, prepare objective questions and, and the objective part is, is really important. It, it, when we're doing assessments, this isn't about opinions. This is about did this happen or not? We can then ask objective questions that measure whether the things that you think make you successful actually happened or not. Um, and and those are essentially things that that we will cover. I mean, it, you'd expect it to cover things like service standards and food and uh, environment and cleanliness. Um, sometimes we can also include some things that you can see from a customer's perspective, um, but you wouldn't pick up in, in consumer surveys. So, for example, how, how effective was the promotion? Um, you know, if you're, for example, if you're a, 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 if you're a pub that um, gets a lot of um, income off the back of uh, sports, for example, are you promoting the next event successfully? What's your sure. Facebook page looking like? Um, uh, when it comes to things like processes, uh, did you take the opportunity when you saw that you know, there were lots of half empty glasses there to top them up? All of those things contribute to sales, uh, which is ultimately what drives everything that we do. We, we want the pubs to, to sell more, be more successful and get more people coming back. But, that, but to answer your question, it's really about that, that framework for what, you, what makes you successful. Uh, and those are the things then that we will measure. Now for the awards, um, of course, uh, we had to have some kind of uh, framework that suited, you know, the, the range of pubs that we were looking at. So, uh, so it was a little bit more, a little bit more general than that, but covering all the things that you'd expect to be covered. Um, and then we can get not just measurements, but also comments so that if you if you see areas that are perhaps not performing um, as, as you'd hope they would be, you can see the context, uh, see what happens, see who said what to whom or, or, or where somebody, you know, where, where a standard was not was not met. Um, so that then it's not about catching people out. This is about um, positive opportunities to reflect and learn and see what we can do better uh, next time. Um, and so I was going to say, particularly where you you have quite high turnover in 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 uh, in places like this, if you've got the framework and you've got the process for continual uh, refreshing and renewal, um, then it it supports that culture of continuous improvement. And I suppose um, so. There's there's a couple of things that you I've picked out of what you've just said, and I I feel like certainly from a consumer perspective, consistency is really important to me. So I need a consistently good experience um, every time I go in somewhere um, to make me want to come back. But equally, um, one of the one of the things about pubs and the Great British Pub is that they are all different, and so it's equally important to me um, as a consumer that it's not robotic and it that it the although it's consistent in terms of the standard of service that i get when i go into a venue um that it's very personalized so those visits that you mentioned if i was uh, thinking of our members and a lot of our members are individual site operators are you saying that your uh, template for that visit would be tailored to their premises they could have so it's not a one size fits all it's something that you would tailor to suit them yeah, yeah, certainly. So we, we work with a number of different pub companies. They all have different questionnaires. Obviously, they've all got themes that are in, in common. They're all operating in the same marketplace. Um, and that in itself does actually allow us to do some benchmarking between them, because if we've got equivalent questions, but sometimes the 
um, the standards and also the language, the terminology might be quite quite specific. You might use terms in your business that aren't used in, in other people's. So I think being able to reflect um, that that culture, but also the materials that you use for training. So in other words, we're going to we're going to train you to do these things because we think they're really important um, and we're going to measure you on exactly those same things. You've got that that connection between them then. Um, and you mentioned consistency. Um, I think particularly for for um, for pubs where people feel an emotional attachment to them, they, they you know, if you find a pub you like, you tend to go back you know, reasonably regularly. Um, and that's that's what we want people to do. And and um, if you if you have one bad experience that you could lose a couple of future visits out of that or other you know you know that people talk to other people and, and word of mouth spreads particularly where you've got a local local catchment area so by having having those standards clear and understood and measured sometimes just the fact that people know they're going to be measured means that they actually deliver those standards um sure. sometimes even regardless of whether you whether you talk about them afterwards um, so, um, yeah, so, so consistency, but also um, personalizing that experience and you can be you can be objective. You can you can still measure that personalization in an objective way. If you're saying this is the type of um, uh, type of way that we want to deal with this particular situation, the way in which we want people to interact, did it meet this description or did it not? Um, so you can be quite objective in terms of how you measure that. So it doesn't need to be scripted. It just needs to be to have that feeling and that um, it, to bring that ethos that you're that you're looking for in every interaction with your customers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, we'd always try and steer people clear of questions that encourage robotic behaviour because we know deep down, no, nobody wants that. You, you know, you don't want that as the pub operator. The customer doesn't want it in terms of an experience. So uh, we have to phrase it in such a way that. It, it, it allows people to, to keep that framework in their head, but to allow the personality to come out and overlay on, on top of that, that framework. And, and also to relax people, because if you're, you know, if you're trying to provide a service in the pub, the more relaxed you can be and know that you can do a good job, um, the, the better you'll, you'll, you'll be at it. Um, and so the fewer things you have to try and remember, um, often the better. Sure. And so we talked, you talked just then about word of mouth and um, we know that over the last sort of 18 months to two years, um, our, our members have been um, much quicker to adopt technology because they've had to. So we've seen um, technology boom in the hospitality um, sector in terms of people using different types of technology for uh, order and pay um, and, you know, different ways of engaging with tech. Um, I guess that's changed also and had an impact on the number of online reviews that you see, has it? And how does that, how has that filtered through? Yes, the, I mean, the number of online reviews is fairly consistent, actually, um, uh, because that was reasonably well established um, pre-pandemic. Um, but I think what we've seen a big shift in now is the, is the additional channels that, that people are using for ordering. Um, so, you know, it used to be you know, cash has disappeared effectively, hasn't it now? Um, and people are paying in different ways. Uh, we've, we've seen a lot of change, particularly in casual dining, where um, a lot of their income is coming from delivery and click and collect and, and so on. Slightly less so in pubs. Um, and it, it depends slightly on your on your setup there. Um, so uh, one of the key things we're trying to do is to help to categorise the different types of experience. Um, because uh, that can expose sometimes patterns if you've got if you've got one of your channels that that's perhaps not performing as as well as the others, or uh, or that um, you know you're getting kind of weaker word of mouth coming out of it. Then we can start to drill back and say, well, what's what's causing that? Um, you know, what where are we losing the um, where, where are we losing the points on that, and, and what are customers actually saying? Um, but yeah, certainly there's a much broader range of different experiences and there isn't a, a sort of one one size fits all um, in, in terms of what, what consumers expect now. And technology is, a, is an important part of that. 
um, not just through the ordering process or the interaction process, um, but uh, also in terms of the actual feedback process itself. Um, people bef before the pandemic didn't use QR codes all that much. Um, now they don't think anything of it. Um, but you often, in terms of getting people to provide feedback, um, if we if we look particularly now at those uh, more subjective opinion based uh, options, you generally have to ask people for it now, uh, not so much in reviews because, well, I suppose even with reviews, because Google will ask you, won't they? They'll say, you know, what, what sure. do you think? Leave, leave a rating. So um, but if you if you've got a survey channel, let's say a, a branded survey channel where you're encouraging people to feedback with you afterwards, um, you can't really be passive about that anymore. You do need to actually reach out and, and you know, off, off the back of a booking or pay by phone or uh, any, of, any of those other touch points where you, you've interacted with the guest. But equally, it's a good opportunity, um, uh, particularly post visit, to kind of remind the guest of, of their experience uh, to get some feedback. If something's not worked out particularly well, you've got an opportunity to put that right. Um, if somebody has, if something has, somebody has had a good experience, well, there's a couple of things you can do there. You can remind them that they've had a good time. That's not a bad thing. Um, but you can also uh, subtly suggest that maybe it would be a nice idea to kind of leave a, a review online and you start to influence your, your online uh, presence as well. Because I guess uh, it's always been my experience that people are really quick to leave poor reviews if they've had a bad experience, but they need more encourage encouragement to uh, remember to leave a positive review. Um, mm. So I guess it's becoming even more important now um, and with the advancement of tech to drive that data capture, um, even for our single site operators so that they understand, you know, what, what are the key things that are making the difference to their customers? Because when you look at your guest experience, um, and I guess if you look at it from the, the whole holistic picture from when you you're approaching the venue and you're walking through the door, um, there are certain things that um, will have a bigger impact on my overall feeling as a consumer about the whole visit. So, you know, I might be really forgiving of certain things, but actually other things, you know, for example, I might not mind a wait for my food to come out if, you know, provided I've been told by the server there's a bit of a delay when I place my order. But then I want to be able to pay quickly at the end of the meal. Um, and that part of the process is quite important to me. And I guess mm. there's different weightings um, that, that a consumer will apply to various different parts of that guest experience. So when you look at um, the guest experience with one of your clients, do, does that come into the conversation? How how does that work through? Yeah, um, so some things are more important than others. Um, so, so you can attach weightings to, to those so you can kind of influence the overall uh, result. Um, but I think uh, in terms of what, what really makes it successful or memorable and that leads to that sort of word of mouth, you can boil it all down to one word and that's surprise. Um, because if something kind of shakes you out of your comfort zone, you'll talk about it. Um, you know, I was I was really surprised how long it took for me, for us to get served. I mean, you probably wouldn't be quite as polite about it as that, but it's that it's that surprise. Um, and and some things you just take as a given. So if you if you take cleanliness, um, nobody's going to say, "Oh, it was amazing how clean it was in there." That's not the sort of comment you'd expect. But if it was poor, then of course it would get talked sure. about. Um, but you can get very positive surprises as well, of course. Um, you know, I, I, they, they were so attentive and they, you know, they interacted with us really, really well. And we felt like we were at home. You know, th those are the sorts of things that people will post about. So um, it, it's almost um, sometimes we worry about making ourselves interesting from an experience. We, maybe we should turn our attention to making our guests interesting because if our guests feel interesting they will be able to talk about that and you know, people that they know will, will read about it or that they'll they'll hear what they've they've got to say so yeah so an element of surprise but that doesn't come by accident you 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 have to kind of um know that you are creating these moments these opportunities for people to uh to to, to memorize in a positive way 
And I guess that's what makes hospitality um, so great and particularly pubs and the warm welcome that you get in a pub and the, you know, the vast difference between uh, one pub and another uh, is what really yeah. makes that experience special for, for particularly for me as a consumer when I go into, into a pub. You know, it's all about um, particularly if they remember me, you know, if they know what kind of drink I like or they even just the acknowledgement at the bar. Um, that whole experience is really important to me as a consumer when I'm when I'm going out to spend my hard earned money. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I think that relationship side of it is probably as important as having the right glass um, and being served in a timely manner. It's it's all part of the, the bigger picture, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I, I once heard a, a, a pub manager telling me how that how that felt. Um, and he was saying that there was this point where he was in the middle of a pub and he could see everything happening around him uh, and, and it felt like it was being managed. It, it felt like everybody was having a good time and that, that he as, as, as the manager of that pub felt like he was being a, a good host and that and you feel it don't you when you can see that yeah. when you can see that happening and the 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 wheels are just kind of um working as they as they as they should be um but you know it's it it's we notice when things go wrong but it's tough isn't it it's it's no accident when it when it goes right um, it's really it really is challenging it's it's you know it has to make it look seamless and to make it look easy um yeah. involves so many moving parts yeah. So yeah. if we uh, again looking back at our, our customer base, our members are predominantly single sites. If I could ask you to um, pick your three top tips for our members around guest experience, what would you say? So I think I would I would start by making sure you you understand what success looks like for your pub um, and define uh, define what those standards are. Uh, secondly, um, make sure you have data from somewhere on, on on how effective that is. You can get that from all sorts of different sources, um, but we can we can help work out what's going to be the best uh, for you. Um, and the third thing then is to do something with that with that data. Do something positive that um, creates a culture of continuous improvement and reflection. Um, and overall, so that's three things. But I think overall, keep it positive. This, this is about um, positive um, reinforcement of, 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 of the things that make you successful. And not taking things personally, I guess it would be, um, I think again, you know, our members, they're, they're, this is their business, but it's their life as well. So I can imagine it's quite difficult to take um, any sort of constructive criticism, um, can, can feel quite personal when when your business is your home effectively. So um, I guess it's important to understand um, that that uh, those points are areas that you can just work on to improve and it's about improving your business overall. Yeah, I think it's really important and, and you know, we see that quite a lot. It, it's you put your heart and soul into it, don't you? And, and sometimes if, you know, particularly sometimes if someone's tone of voice isn't quite right, it can feel quite personal. Um, but I think I just encourage people to try and step back from that um, see it as a gift. In, I know it can feel harsh sometimes, but um, that person could have gone off and, and spoken to somebody else and you wouldn't even know it was happening. They have chosen to, to, to give you that, that information um, and see what you can do to turn it around. If you have got that person's contact details, acknowledge it. That's the, that, that's the first thing. Um, and say, look, you know, thank you, thank you for giving us the feedback. Let's let's use it to kind of make things better. Or you know, maybe if it's something that's referring to a member of of, of the team. Um, uh, and and on the flip side of the coin, you will get positive feedback. Let's celebrate that. Let's make sure the people that that created that um, get to feel that you know the warm glow that comes from that. Um, but yeah, it's it can be difficult not to take it personally, but it, it's it's quite important to try and. Uh, step back from that if you can. 
Well, I guess having access to social media now um, is a, is both a blessing and a curse, but a great opportunity if you are getting positive feedback to share that feedback with um, with people via social media. Because I know that I I quite like to see people's Instagram stories and Facebook stories where they're getting great comments and great pictures, um, and that does influence my decisions on where I go and and where I spend my money. So um, it's all a positive learning curve. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a new set of skills, I think, isn't it, that has been evolving over the over the last few few years, and it's you know it's a it's a discipline just as important it is as it is to manage your supply chain and um, you know and and, uh, and and your finances and so on. Uh, the guest experience is not something that happens by accident. It needs to be it needs to be managed, um, sure. but the rewards will come back to you in terms of. Uh, sales and success and growth. And we're nearly out of time, but if our members want to to know more about HGEM and how you can help them to manage their customer experience and their guest experience, um, what should they do? So uh, head over to hgem.com, hgem.com. Uh, have a little browse around, find out what um, you know, which areas you think would be most interesting. Get in touch. There's a contact page there. Uh, you can even drop a little appointment into our calendar, like a half hour appointment. We'll just talk through, uh, you know, our first aim will be to listen to to, to what, what you're looking to achieve. Uh, and then we can help you with some ideas and, and, and point you in the right direction. But yeah, it's probably the best place to start at the website. Fab. Well, thank you so much for your time today and uh, we'll hope to see you again soon. Will do. All right. Thanks, Anna. Bye.